In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to welcome you all to this celebration of the Eucharist in which we will commend to God three young men from our Holy Spirit Seminary for ordination to the Presbyterate. I welcome in particular the clergy of the diocese, those um, of the diocese, as well as those who are visiting from outside. Also, in a special way, I welcome the families of the three ordinates. I welcome also the members of the Ephata community, which is closely associated with the diocese and um, the uh, Holy Spirit Seminary in particular. The Diocese of Parramatta is the youngest and the most culturally diverse diocese in this country. And so each ordination is a joyous occasion and to have three ordinations tonight at one time is truly a sign of hope and renewal of God's everlasting love for his people. Adam, Matthew and Jack will rejuvenate and reinvigorate the church in the diocese, bringing their unique gifts and talents. They will go out into the deep and spread the word of, and the love of Christ to all and I ask that we all keep them in our prayers as we commend them for priestly ordination. Tonight is also the feast of the presentation of the Lord. Traditionally, it is a day for consecrated life. So we also commend all members of consecrated life in this diocese and across the broader church in our prayers. This ceremony will serve as a reminder to Catholic faithful of the priesthood of all God's people through baptism, and that together with the ordained Christ's disciples are to fulfill the command to consecrate the world according to the divine mandate. So brothers and sisters, now let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God's forever and ever. reading from the prophet Malachi. The Lord God says this, Look, I am going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me. And the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple and the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire and the fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as a refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And then they will make the offering to the Lord as it should be made. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be welcomed by the Lord as in former days, as in the years of old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your heads, grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the King of Glory. Who is the King of Glory? Who is the King of glory, the Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. Who is the King of glory? It gates, lift high your heads, grow higher, ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since all the children share the same blood and flesh, Jesus too shared equally in it, so that by his death, he could take away all the power of the devil who had power over death and set free all those who had been held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it was not the angels that he took to himself. He took to himself descent from Abraham. It was essential that he should in this way become completely like his brothers so that he could be a compassionate and trustworthy high priest of God's religion, able to atone for human sins. That is, because he has himself been through temptation, he is able to help others who are tempted. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, When the day came from them to be purified, as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, 
there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel comforting, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms, and he blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which has been prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans, and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, you see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tri of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years, her days of girlhood over, she had been married for 70, seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day without fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all he looked forward to deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom and God's favor was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Let those to be ordained priest come forward. Reverend Mr. Adam Carlo. Reverend Mr. Matthew Dimion. 
Reverend Mr. Jack El Kazi. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour Jesus our brothers, for the Dear friends in Christ, this evening we gather to celebrate the ordination to the presbyterate of three young men from our Holy Spirit Seminary. For the period of nine to ten years they have been guided in their human, intellectual, pastoral and spiritual development so that they could serve God's people according to the command and the example of Christ. They are always to be, as the Pope reminds seminarians at the North American College recently, signs of a church that goes forth, sharing the presence, compassion, and love of Jesus with our brothers and sisters. The task of formation, however, is not reserved to Father Paul Marshall and Father John Fraunfelder alone or the faculty of the Holy Spirit Seminary. In fact, as they themselves attested, it is an ongoing journey which they walk with the whole people of God. So in the first place, I wish to pay tribute to their families and loved ones. It is their example of living the Catholic faith, particularly in difficult times, that has nurtured and formed their sons, their brothers, their uncles. The ordinance rightfully attributed their parents' faith and devotion as being inspirational and instrumental to their priestly vocation. These laid the, uh, the foundation that others built on. So I'd like to acknowledge also the role of the formation team at the Holy Spirit Seminary and many others who have accompanied Jack, Matthew and Adam with their professionalism, dedication and love. I'm grateful also to the priests and communities who have welcomed and supported them during their time of pastoral placements. The Word of God for the feast of the presentation of the Lord speaks about times of upheaval and change, times of cleansing and purification. It encourages us not to be fearful and lose heart. Rather, like the remnant faithful of Israel, we should be alert to God's actions in history and be courageous and faithful in our witness. In the first reading, Malachi prophesies about the renewal of the temple and its worship. The Lord, he says, will purify the sons of Levi and they will make the offering as it should be made. The long exile that preceded the return to Israel and the rebuilding of the temple was seen in hindsight as a cleansing time. Their offerings 
made with a humble and contrite heart will be acceptable to the Lord. Malachi summons the returned exiles to the new future with a sense of purpose and mission. This new future does not consist in the regaining of their former status as a powerful nation. It is not make Israel great again, which would have been a rallying cry for those wanting to restore the once invincible Jewish monarchy. Rather, for Malachi, their future, the future of the purified, returned exiles, will be a humble remnant people learning to be a beacon of light and justice and a sign of God's presence in the world. The gospel reinforces the theme of hope and promise with the contrasting image of the new and the old. As the child Jesus is presented in the temple, Simeon and Anna recognize him as the glory of Israel and the light for all the nations. In their wisdom and faith, they contemplate the Messiah and speak the prophecy concerning his future and the destiny of the whole humanity. Simeon and Anna stand in the long line of the remnant faithful. They were tested to the limits of their endurance, yet their faith did not falter. They taught us how to be a bridge between the old and the new. I believe the pattern of dying and rising to new life is necessary, indeed critical, to the priesthood. The rhythm of the Paschal mystery is being rigorously enacted in the priesthood of our time. We need to die to all that is unworthy of Christ's priesthood in order to rise and resemble even more perfectly the master's servant. Instead of wanting to return to some golden era of the priesthood, we should embrace the, ref the refining and purifying that Malachi speaks about. Perhaps the old worldly trappings of the priesthood, like the ornaments of the temple, are being stripped away only to reveal the real treasures of Christ, the treasures of compassion, humility, and servanthood. The Feast of the Presentation recalls the humble way of the Messiah who came not to restore the status of a former Israel, but to do God's will even unto death, death on the cross. He became completely like his brothers and sisters, as the second reading reminds us. A priest, above all, points to the mystery of Christ dying and rising, that is, the life-giving force of the world. So. Let us pray that these men, ordained for service today, will be a sign of the Church, committed to consecrating the world with the leaven of the Gospel. They cannot live their consecration fully, especially as ordained ministers, without getting themselves immersed in the messiness of life, without going out and embracing those at the periphery. Their consecration and ours pushes us out into the deep and the world for the sake of its transformation. Adam, Matthew, and Jack, your priesthood is a sign of hope and renewal of God's everlasting love for his people. And so we pray that Christ's self-sacrificial love, which you will celebrate daily at the altar, will nourish and strengthen you on the journey that you have just begun tonight.
the Adam, Matthew and Jack, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as a worthy fellow worker with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people and trust it to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for, to the, for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourself to God or Adam do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Matthew, do you promise respect and obedience to me? and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? A God who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel. Pray for us. Say 
Saint Lawrence. Pray for us. Saint Anthony of Egypt. Pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. Pray for us. Saint Patrick. Pray We beseech you, Lord our God, 
and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Let us stand. Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, Offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too, in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater care. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you send your Son into the world, Jesus, who is Apostle and High Priest of our confession, through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his Apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, that these your servants, the dignity of the priesthood, renew deep within them the spirit of holiness, that they may henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers without order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, O Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so, May the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sit.
Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, and power, guard and preserve you, people, and offer sacrifice. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guards and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifices to God. Jack, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Adam, receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
Jack received the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you willed that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation. And with the angels and saints praise you, as with our hands we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servants, and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, 
graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for these your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the priesthood. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant table, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection, to perfection within us. And as you fulfill Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the laws, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sit. Father Adam Carlo, Father Jack El Kazi, and I, Father Matthew Dimian, are now priests of Jesus Christ forever. No take backs. Glory and thanks to the Father who set us apart before we were born. Glory and thanks to the Son who on the cross became both high priest and victim for love of us. And glory and thanks to the Holy Spirit, who tonight has conformed our souls to Christ the priest, making us mediators of his grace for the sanctification and upbuilding of the church. The rest of our lives will be spent thanking Almighty God for this great gift and using it to glorify him. Thanks also to the church the body of Christ, the people of God, both in heaven and on earth, you, 
Because our vocations were born in the church, they were nourished by the church. And so whatever honour is given to us today, you have a share in it. And so we'd like to thank all those people who made our vocations and tonight possible. Firstly, honour and thanks to the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints dear to our hearts who have accompanied us, interceded for us, left us with their virtuous examples and listened to us as we complain non-stop. In today's feast, our Blessed Mother presents Jesus in the temple. We also place our souls into her arms as her sons, entrusting our priesthood to her secure maternal care to be offered to God. Thank you, Bishop Vincent, for ordaining us to the priesthood tonight and also for your fatherly care and accompaniment over the course of formation. We look forward to labouring with you in the Lord's vineyard and going to the margins and digging deep, going out into the depths with you. Thank you to our brother priests, both present and absent, who have been role models and mentors to us over the years. There are so many to mention, too many to mention, but I especially want to thank Cardinal George Pell, who was an example to us of zeal, courage, faithfulness, and bearing one's cross. It is providential that our ordination falls on the same day as his funeral. The Lord is consoling the church in Australia as she mourns the loss of one beloved priest. He gifts her three new ones. We cannot replace Cardinal Pell, but we will certainly aspire to be gifts to the church as he was. Thank you to Holy Spirit Seminary, Father Paul Marshall, the rector, and all the faculty and staff of Holy Spirit Seminary over the last nine years who have formed and nourished our vocations. We would like especially to thank Father John Hogan, who was the rector of, for the majority of our time in the seminary and has borne most of the brunt of our many vices. Thank you, Father John, for your love of the priesthood and your fatherhood. To all those we call brother seminarians during our time in the seminary, your fraternity, your passion for the faith, and your steady pursuit of virtue strengthened our love for the priesthood and kept us going. That's Parramatta and Sydney too, and everyone else. And for all those still in the seminary, we look forward to the day when we can also call you brother priests. Thank you also to all the parishes and the schools with all their priests and staff that have taken us in over the years. The parishes where we grew up, those where we fell in love with the faith, and those where we went on placement as seminarians, and all their parishes and priests, especially those parishes where we have served as deacons over the last year, St. Patrick's Guildford, St. Bernadette's Castle Hill, and St. Patrick's Parramatta. Our vocations steadily grew and matured under your care because of your generosity to us. So thank you. A sincere thanks to all the people we've met along the way who have aided us by their prayers, encouragement, and hospitality. Those who have welcomed us into their homes, those we've met at parishes, schools, university, youth conferences, and all the like. We can't wait to get out there and to continue serving among you. To all our friends, both old and new, who have become like our family, we can't repay, sorry, we can't wait to repay your goodness to us by serving you as priests. A big thank you to all who've contributed to the mammoth task of planning and arranging an ordination. Thank you, Sister Mary Louise and her team at the Office for Worship, St. Patrick's Cathedral staff and volunteers, Father Chris de Rosario, diocesan MC, and all-round good guy, <laughs> and our servers especially. Thank you to Bernard Kirkpatrick and the Cathedral Scholar for chanting so beautifully for the glory of God.
A special thank you to Christian Katsanos, who's a schoolmate of mine who actually composed a hymn especially for tonight, and that was the one sung at the offertory. What a beautiful and unique gift. Thank you. A very special thank you to Sarah Alimangohan, who actually handmade the beautiful chasuble that I'm wearing and Father Adam's chasuble. She, lab she, she designed it in collaboration with us, but she labored for months and months over this, and she prayed very deeply about the design. So, so the beauty that you see is also the fruit of prayer, and we couldn't be happier with the design. So thank you so much, Sarah, and everyone who helped her. And to everyone else who's made this evening so special, thank you. I'm sure I've missed someone, but we're genuinely so overjoyed and grateful for everything you've done. To our families, all those who are present, and all those who could not be with us, we love and appreciate every one of you. Our faith started in the home, and so did our vocation. Thank you for your constant support, your encouragement in difficulties. But most of all, thank you for your unwavering love and commitment. We love you dearly. And to all here present, thank you for your support. We really appreciate you turning out and we feel overwhelmingly loved by your overwhelming turnout. We're very grateful to all of you. In the name of Christ, the Lamb that was slain, we now dedicate our lives to you, his bride, the church. So please continue to pray for us that we will be priests after the heart of Jesus Christ. And of course, we now dedicate our lives to praying for you. God bless you. Thank you, Father um, Matthew, for your um, words. Uh, for many of us, it's been a uh, full day, bookended by two major ecclesiastical events, the um, solemn but somber Requiem Mass for the late George Cardinal Pell at St. Mary's Cathedral this morning, and uh, a more joy-filled celebration of the uh, um, presbyteral ordination of our three um, newly ordained. And um, <clears throat> you're glad to know that uh, uh, I didn't emulate the um, Requiem Mass for the Cardinal, um, the late Cardinal George Pell in length um, this, tonight. And there is a common theme that runs through uh, these two events, and that is the Lord um, accompanies and strengthens his people for their priestly, prophetic, and royal mission in the world. So thank you for your prayerful participation in this celebration. Thank you for your ongoing support of not just the newly ordained, but all our clergy and, and um, members of the consecrated life. And let's uh, continue as we go forward, um, being the levering force of the gospel for the world. Please be upstanding. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. Amen. 
and may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the mercies and death.